Hello, today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, our teaser very, very kindly sent me some gouache paints to review and I've never used gouache before. Um, so I was a bit sort of dubious about <laughs> how to go about it. So I lost, I lost, I watched lots of YouTube videos sort of explaining different things and that sort of thing to try and give me an idea of where to go with it. Um, but I decided before I actually went in and did a proper painting or something, um, like a finished painting with them, I wanted to test out how the paints worked. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this little bit here. I wanted to see how the paint went down and how it layered and how it blended and just sort of the colours and that sort of thing. So as I said, these are Arteza paints and it's also um, an Arteza um, I think it's a watercolour or a mixed media paper pad. I'll double check it, but I will link them down in the description. And gouache is, I'd never heard of gouache for ages. Um, it was only recently that I found out about it. And I had no idea what it is, so I did a bit of research. And it's very, very similar to watercolour because it's water-based, but it's it's more opaque. It's you can you, mm, uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is because it's more opaque you can work from dark to light um, whereas you can't do that with um, watercolors you have to sort of leave the the lighter areas um, so the paper shows through to get that lightness whereas with the gouache because it's more opaque you can layer it on top and I much prefer that because um, I'm a bit of a messy painter and I'm not very good at um, keeping within lines and things which you'll see in a minute <laughs> um, but it means I can sort of go over the top and correct things if I make a mistake. Gouache is also you can reactivate it um, so the advantage of that what I mean by reactivate it is if it dries you put some water back down on it and it goes back to the same sort of consistency and you can manipulate it again. The advantages of that, because there's some advantages and disadvantages, um, but the advantage is you can go over um, certain areas to either change the colour or correct mistakes, or you can even, if you don't like the colour you've put down, you can just put some water back over it and then sort of almost pull it back up um, with some tissue. And it, the the disadvantage of that is that you can end up blending colours that you didn't actually want to blend. Um, and if you're really pleased with something and then you go over it and it's, you can mess it up. So you've got to be sort of wary of where you're putting the water um, and the more paint. Also, the more layers of it you put down, um, especially the more thicker layers you put down, the more likely you are to disturb the paint underneath and start picking different tones up. And so that's definitely something I realised I had to keep in mind. Um, but I did like the way it blended. I struggled quite a bit um, because the only other paints I've ever used are, um, what are they called? Acrylic paints. Um, so I'm sort of used to using them, although I haven't done that in years. But it does act completely differently. Um, <laughs> of course, it's really different to, I think it's very different to, Acrylic. Uh, I think it's very different to acrylic. I found it harder to get a smooth gradient because I was trying to work out how much to put down and how little to put down. The the paper that I'm using, it was really, really good for this test, just sort of putting bits down here and there. I didn't realise it's best to tape your paper down. So when I did a, I did a wash with a different piece, but I really didn't end up liking it. So I didn't use that. But I did put a full wash down onto one of the um, pieces that I did and it warped the paper. So I should have taped it down. So that's what I did in my final piece. Um, and I didn't have any problems with it. Yeah, if you really want to put like a like a bright highlight, it's probably helpful, like with watercolour paper, if you want it really, really bright, um, helpful to leave the paper clear of those highlights. I didn't do that with this. I put the paint down and I just could not get it to go as bright as I wanted to because it kept picking up the paint underneath, like I say. So that made it quite tricky. So what I'm saying is if you want uh, a really bright highlight, don't paint anything underneath it. That's what I found. It's much better because it just just muddies it up a little bit because it's picking up the paint from underneath because you can reactivate it with the water like I said so there's where the disadvantage sort of came in 
but it does help with blending so with the blending i did find it quite hard to control the blending because it's a different consistency than i'm used to it's sort of thicker and it wants to mix but it kind of doesn't want to mix as well and because it's so <laughs> i know that doesn't make a lot of sense but you have to sort of use it to understand what i'm talking about um, and I do suggest actually trying this because it was really, really fun if you can afford it. And by the way, um, I personally think that these are suitable, suitable, super affordable paints um, for what you get because there is so many in the box. I'll double check and I'll put it up on the screen how many paints I got in here. But there's a huge range of colours. Um, so it made it easy, especially for me, because I'm sort of new at um, mixing paints and colours and that sort of thing. It made it a lot easier to get some of the colours that I wanted. It also includes some almost pearlescent ones. I'm using the pearlescent kind of colours at the minute. You can't tell so much under this lighting, but they're really, really pretty. Um, so that was great. But as I say, I was finding blending the colours slightly difficult. So what I did is I kept going back over, once that piece had dried, I kept going back over and reworking it. So once it was dry, because I could repaint over um, the areas, I could sort of build the layers up until I was happy with the way the colours blended together. The other thing to keep in mind if you're using gouache paints is the dark colours that you put down seem to dry lighter and the light colours dry darker. Um, so I had to go over places a few times to get the, the colour that I wanted because once it dried I realised it was either too dark or too light. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Um, it might be a good idea to swatch the colours that you're using first to make sure that they are the colours that you want um, um, and obviously wait for them to dry so you can see what their true colours are going to be. I really enjoyed how I could get really detailed in certain areas, like on the orange, you can see on the, is it the zest, the zest of the orange as it comes away from there, and uh, the, sort of the, the little lines on the segments. So I really liked how detailed you could get with the gouache. So after I had a bit of a play about with it and um, worked out how the paint kind of moved and interacted with itself and different colours and shading, um, I decided to go on to uh, an actual proper finished piece. I can in my lip one fussing. Hang on. Don't press the buttons. Did you want to say something? Say something. What are you going to say? <laughs> say, say hello. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> That's my little one, Ridley. Um, working from home, sometimes you get interrupted. <laughs> um, anyway, back to the video. So I decided for the sort of final image with these gouache paints, like a, a proper picture, um, rather than the just <laughs> blocks of testing, I wanted to put it in one image um, to see what I could come up with. And I chose one of my little people because I've drawn them so many times. It's it's quite a simple, well, not simple, but it's, it's an easier sort of thing for me to draw because I'm used to drawing them. And because the gouache was a, a new medium that I'm working with, I wanted to make it as easy <laughs> as possible for myself. I think the thing that I struggled the most with was patience <laughs> because I'm not used to having to wait for things to dry um, in my art because like I say I, I usually use uh, just coloured pencils so or watercolour pencils so I'm not used to having to wait for things to dry so that it doesn't blend so I was sort of fighting with myself because I kept sort of looking at a piece and um, a part of it and then going oh no that's not the colour I wanted I want to go back over it but I couldn't be bothered to wait for it to dry <laughs> so that's probably the the biggest problem I came up with um, well, I didn't come up with a problem, I just experienced it. <laughs> I'm not actually making problems for myself on purpose. Um, the other thing is this camera and the lighting, it's not picking up the vibrancy of the colours as much as I would like, um, because it is a lot brighter than this. I did try and use sort of a... <laughs> sort of limited palette because I've got a habit of just chucking every single colour I can think of onto the page and then it gets a bit much so I wanted to try testing out just using a few key colours and it's mostly greens and blues and then I had a, a big pop of yellow in the back afterwards <laughs> um, but yeah with the gouache being so opaque 
I found that it covered up my line work <laughs> for uh, a lot of the time. So I eventually had to go back over all the line work to make it crisp again, um, which is something I really, I hate going back over line work. So if I was going to do something like this again, I would just do it in a light pencil, like a HB pencil so that the graphite doesn't transfer too much um, and then paint it and then ink it. Uh, because I think it would just make a much nicer finish. Overall, though, I really, really enjoyed using these paints because, well, like I said, it's not something I'd tried before, and it was interesting to to sort of practice with something I wasn't used to because I didn't know how it would perform or how it would work. So I really, really enjoyed it, um, and I really like the sort of flat coloured finish you can get. Um, so yeah, I think overall it's it's been a success and I definitely look forward to using these again. Um, so if you're interested in purchasing these, I'll make sure I leave the link down in the description. Um, yeah, check them out. <laughs> check them out if you want to. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, all the like and subscribe, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff <laughs> if you're interested in seeing more from me. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. I can't find any outro music that I like, so here you go. La 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 la. La 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 la. Ta da. Dum dum dum. Bye. <laughs>